let's talk about what this reporting season is going to look like. Um, European banks have not provisioned in the same way that U.S. banks did right back at the beginning of the crisis. The U.S. banks are starting to see the benefit of that. Where are European banks going to be? Yeah, it's 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 broadly true as a as a as an overall statement to say that the Europeans haven't provisioned as much as the U.S. banks, and say in general it's also true that the, the European banks haven't taken as much risk uh, on their books as the U.S. banks. But it's it, you, you get different answers across Europe. So I would say that the the U.K. banks, the Irish banks, the Nordic banks, some of the Benelux banks have front loaded significantly. Uh, and a lot more than, say, you know, if you look at, say, the, the French or the Italians, some of the Spanish banks, then that's less true. They have still front-loaded to a degree, uh, but much less so. I think it's, given what we're seeing, uh, and given all the, the, the prior talks you've been having today on uh, delays to vaccines uh, or more travel restrictions, I think it's, it's way too early to expect investors to pay up for uh, any good news on provisions. I think that, as a story, will come through, but it's, it's far too early for investors to really really get their teeth into buying into that theme just yet. Uh, Guy alluded to it, but uh, if you're in equity trading, are you going to have a killer quarter? Um, it should have been. It should have been. Um, that's that's what the U.S. bank's uh, results would have indicated. The results there were, were up significantly. Um, it's going to be harder looking into 2021. That's really what investors tend to look at with with 4Q numbers is we're kind of interested what happened in the fourth quarter, but we're really, really interested in in how the first quarter is going uh, on what's going to happen from, from here on in. Uh, I think most of that good news on the equities being better has probably been absorbed uh, by the market already. So we're really keen to see uh, what the banks can give us in terms of guidance for, for 2021, albeit early days. So what do you think they're going to say? I think, I mean, you know, um, Mr. Manduka, who was on, a uh, former colleague of mine who was on, on before talking of, of the travel industry and how, you know, what's going to happen there next? Is it going to be uh, more rights issues? I think that's an open question for a lot more corporate sectors where, you know, a lot of the things that we look at as banks analysts, we can see that, that leverage is high for the corporate sector. Uh, I would say that a lot of that lending uh, growth that we saw uh, from banks into the non-financial corporates is actually sitting in deposits right now. Um, but there's nothing to stop those, those corporates eventually turning to the equity market. We can all see that the equity market valuations are extremely high. It's a great time for corporates to, uh, to be, if they do want to delever, which is not clear that that should be what they do, given where interest rates are today. But if they were to, um, the, the equity markets are most certainly open. So um, I'd look to see... Uh, much better view on, on ECM. I think in, um, for fixed income markets, it's going to be much, much harder for them to repeat what they saw in 2020. Really, it's going to be much, much harder for the macro products of so things like rates and FX trading. That was up an enormous amount in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's unlikely to be repeated, but things like credit, credit should actually be relatively good uh, within 2021. So within your FIC franchises, uh, credit's going to be a better place to be than, uh, than the macro products in 2021.